You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. There's inappropriate and then there's... There's some there's music again. Inappropriate. Um, and uh, yeah, I uh, think we just need to lean into it. Why are you so um, uh, inconsistent with the music? Uh, because I have ADHD um, and uh, the attention span of a goldfish. Can I ask you a question? Why are Wait, you let's clap? Uh, let's get it. Go. You don't have to do that anymore. That's well planned. It. Okay. Um, it does mean I ruin the music most of the time, but we don't have to clap. Uh, why am I the uh, the subject to um, every early to mid two thousands female pop anthem in the group chat? Because <laughs> you know, it only makes it's only funny when it's you. I like you can't say it's Sanchez. What? That'd be we're, we're recording. recording. <laughs> 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 we're finally doing pastor stuff. <laughs> so better uh COVID. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? Are we doing two songs? Because you're keeping that all in. Oh, yeah. The whole thing. <laughs> um, I just don't know a better way to start it. Um, so uh, mm, on that uh, uncomfortable note, um, we, we got to get our kids in, in, in a little bit. But we should talk about Jesus. Yeah, I do, too. I have a basketball game with my kids. So we're in this league, right? And I'll oh, I'll, I'll make this quick. We're in this league. Uh, my kids, uh, uh, they, they go to a private Lutheran school. Uh, fifth, sixth graders played the JV, and then seventh and eighth, for the most part, played the varsity. But there, there's so few seventh and eighth graders, so they're pulling sixth graders out. So oh. I'm coaching, I'm coaching the JV. I got mostly fifth graders out there, fifth graders, right? And we're playing, we're playing uh, middle schools. So it's sixth, seventh, and eighth graders that are schools fifth, of like grade. schools of like 400, where they're cutting like 40 kids. And we're playing their B team, which are eighth graders who can dunk the ball. It's just silly. It's just... It's, it's so you are uh, the Washington Generals versus the <laughs> Trotters every week. Every single week. Is it uh, and unlike and unlike Krusty the Cloud, nobody's ever going to bet on us thinking it's our time. You know, I I'm all for like just cheering for them every once in a while. Just just bring your Washington Generals gear in and. Uh, See if any parents in the stands get the joke. Sure. Um, <laughs> oh, we should do it. That'd be great. That's All perfect. right. Anyway, so I got that today. Um, <laughs> it's not too late to order some gear. Amazon has same day delivery. <laughs> <laughs> get sent straight, directly to the school. Just for a message, it's for a bit. Um, <sighs> not a hug. Right. All right, we are in uh, Mark chapter five. I don't think we're going to get through all of it, but because there's just two big sections, and both of them are pretty. Pretty cool sections. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think we should try and uh, get both of them in. No, let's let's just uh, Mark chapter five, verse one. And they came to the other side of the sea. Who's they? Uh, they being the apostles. I was going to I was going to they being G Je- or him being Jesus. But um, then <laughs> right, you yeah. jumped in before. I, I did. I did. I did. It. Okay. <clears throat> they being the apostles came to the other side of the sea to the country of the uh, Gerasenes. And uh, when Jesus being Jesus had stepped out of the boat immediately, there met him uh, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs, on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of this man, you unclean spirit. 
And Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, send us to the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Wait, we're stopping there? You want to, you want to, oh, you want more? Okay. Well, well it's, more stuff happens, right? Well, yeah, but like. So that, the that, herdsmen that... fled and told it to the city and in the country, and people came to see what it uh, what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had had the legion sitting there, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs, and they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. This is the word of the Lord. That, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's a big paragraph of context there. You just yeah. wanted to jump into that next time? One, one thing at a time. I figured we'd do it in, in chunks, but no. This is a really dark text for how jovial we were being, by the way. Um, I, like, if, like, yeah, I mean, at the end, it's good. At the end, it's good. But like, right. if you're in the middle of it, it's, it's not. And, and like, this is actually a, a picture of uh, like Christianity that I, I don't want to much be a part of, where it, it's just sort of like too bad that it's bad. Now, in the end, it'll be good. Um, one day you'll die. One day you'll go to heaven. And, and it's not helpful right now. There's there's a man who is cut off from all his, his family and friends. He's self-harming. He is he is um, tormented night and day. He, he lives among the dead. Like this is this is dark stuff. And um, inside of all of it. Well, yeah, it, it's help. Give me some light. Well, I think uh, uh, at risk of being uh, too uh, simple, Jesus obviously is delighted. He's going to come into this, but <clears throat> well, let's just start at the beginning, right? So he doesn't even want help. What's that? He doesn't even want help. Yeah, probably not. I mean, he's not in his right mind, and 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 the only speaking uh, uh, speaking parts that uh, this guy gets seems to be. Uh, uh, that the the I'm demons right. are are treating him like a a puppet. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I, let's get into this. Let's, let's kind of yeah. go uh, verse by verse here. Um, they being the apostles, it? right? They being the apostles. Sorry, I'm just trying to see how much time we got. Not that much. All right. Uh, they came uh to the other side, right? Um, to this uh, weird place. Uh, so what's this other side? It's the other side of the Sea of Galilee, right? Yeah, right after he calmed the storm. Right. Um. And so this is primarily this is the, the the first time that Jesus goes to the uh, uh, goes primarily to a Gentile region, mm -hmm. which kind of speaks a little bit differently. We're going to see, uh, I think, of how Jesus interacts and how other people interact with him as well. Um, but it's good news nonetheless from Jesus's point of view, right? But this is the first time that he's actually in the Book of Mark uh, that he's actually going to a region. Uh, that is uh, uh, primarily of the Gentiles. And we'll see this in a, in a couple different ways. What's that? Yeah, I was going to say it connects in a lot of different ways once you recognize this is a Gentile land. This is also the first place he doesn't tell anybody to keep it on the low low. Uh, that, right. That <clears throat> right. And this is also the area where uh, later on, I believe it's in Mark. Uh, I think we get both, both of them in Mark. It's where Jesus feeds the 4,000, right? <clears throat> Not the 5,000. And I think oftentimes we kind of forget that Jesus uh, does two massive uh, miraculous feedings. Uh, well, one we just sort of shrink it because it's four thousand, so that's not as important. It's not, and it's the second time. Why couldn't he do six thousand? Mm. Right, yeah, you got to up those numbers. Right, really. But we're going to get to that in, in Mark because there's there's distinctions with that too. But the four thousand is in this area, so keep that in mind for future episodes. It's it's that is in a Gentile area. Does that have anything to say? So anyways, we've got this guy, right? Jesus steps out of this this boat and he uh, immediately, I love how Mark continuously does that, right? Immediately this man, uh, uh, there met him a man from the tombs, right? With an unclean spirit. 
He's living. Yeah, this is this is some crazy stuff. Where do where do the demons cast this guy out to? To the the place where death just surrounds him. Uh, this is this is where we sort of group those enemies. You know, sin, death, and the power of the devil. Um, right. One always leads to the rest. Um, right. And I'm curious. I'm curious if if and I don't know well enough either, but. <clears throat> Certainly within paganism, and you see uh, certain strains of paganism, and you see this in the Old Testament sort of stuff, where um, the Israelites, when they were going into the Promised Land, had to be warned of, like, the pagans worshiping the dead, pagans being amongst the tombs, trying necromancy, trying all of these sorts of things, trying to communicate with the dead, right? So, like, this this doesn't seem... The things that are evil... um, this seems to be exactly where this guy should be, right? From a number of different points of view, from an active point of view, but also, like you said, <clears throat> the things of the demons are the things of death. They're the things of sin. They're the things that, uh, of our great our great enemies. Right, but this is a darker way than a lot of the pagan <clears throat> religions sort of deal with this. Because like, no matter what worldview you have, be you you know atheist or, or pagan or Christian or anything else, you've got to contend with this idea that we're mortal. Sooner or later, we're going to bump up against death. And most people kind of go you know Midwestern with it. We're like, if I have to live right next to you, like I'm not avoiding you, I better at least get on polite terms. Um, and, and so we, we do our best to sort of make friends with that, to celebrate. Um, and, and the pagan religions, they're, they're always sort of trying to exert some sort of control over it. Can you talk to the people on the other side? This is different. Like he, he's not sort of trying to control death or, or, or make death his, he's just sort of letting death seep over him and define him. Now he, he lives out among the tombs and he just sort of, <clears throat> I'm curious if he was, yeah. And, and, and we're kind of speculating. I'm curious if he was cast out there, not by the demons or perhaps, um, but maybe by the people. Well, they like they've, tr- they've which, tried to bind him. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> They're trying to bind him uh, a number of different times, uh, bind him where, is, I guess is my question. I don't know. Probably not among the tombs. Um, like this Probably is not. No. Um, even for the the pagans, this is a, a, a they have the idea of of, of sort of the, a, a a sacred way to 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 handle the dead. Um, and, and putting a man who's unwell out among them is is not that. Um, that that he breaks free of the chains and then this is where he he's found not chained means this is where he wants to be in this in this state of mind. Yeah. He, he wants to be in, in this state of mind, hurting himself, cutting himself with rocks. And and this is where he he's he's essentially trapped. It's not by change that he's trapped there. Um that would be the simpler thing. It, it's it's no, by, that's a good point. <clears throat> I'm curious if he wants to be self self like this is the difficult thing because we're we're not just dealing with uh, a guy with mental illness here. Um we're dealing with somebody who is who's been possessed by the demons i think want is maybe not the right word for it um so much as compelled um like we we talk about right. want. like i want to go to chick-fil-a later and, and we sort of exert it as a as sort of a positive force i don't but like chick-fil-a it's too expensive it's not that bad mcdonald's no. is that expensive though you remember <clears throat> when you go to mcdonald's for like four dollars <clears throat> remember you, when you could go to taco bell for like two so you would go to taco bell though and you would just give them a handful of money and get a random assortment of like probably probably beef tortillas and cheese <laughs> and sort of various it doesn't matter what you order <clears throat> sort of, here's some some right this one we're gonna serve to you flat this one we're gonna fold it this one we're gonna roll it but it's all the same all the same <laughs> um, no so you're compelled to go to taco bell like you don't really have a right when we talk about this right um, exactly i think it's okay to recognize like our wants are not always like healthy wants um, this is this is the same with any sort of um, desire to sin. Uh, I, I am compelled towards it. I, I do actually find a, a a satisfaction in the answering of the compelling, um, in in falling into my vices, in falling into my despair, um, and and so sort of like, is this man making good choices? Everybody says no. Nobody wants to hurt, but at the same time, um, it's, even today with, with self harm, <clears throat> when people talk about it, it, it's it's a it's a discussion of being compelled. There is there is balance at the other end. There is right judgment at the other end, and, and so it, it is a, a choice not made necessarily with with good logic or good reason, but but sort of the the desire is there. Um, we have we have two wills, and this is a very stark understanding of what it is to have two wills: the things that are set on the things of God and the things that are set on the things of of evil. 
Um, and we have both of those at war within us. This man, he does not have the things of God at all. And so this is, this is just sort of the existence. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's interesting and we can, we can keep moving cause it is long and we're about halfway through, but, uh, it is interesting that <clears throat> earlier, I think it's in chapter three, Jesus, uh, speaks about, um, being able to, no one can, no one can bind the strong man. Right. Um, <clears throat> and we actually have that happening here. Right. So we've got, we've got no one literally able to bind the strong man here. So the strong man being the demons within this one guy, right? He's got this supernatural strength. So we have Jesus using an analogy of uh, <clears throat> no one can defeat Satan except God in the flesh. And now we've got a physical, actual thing of, of seeing this happen where everybody's tried to bind this guy and no one's been able to do it. I actually really like that analogy. It's a lot. It's a lot better than sort of the the typical. And, and you can see the the power of the devil here because he is stronger than he should be. Um, yeah, no one can bind him, but it, it's actually better to talk about the thing that can, namely, namely Jesus. Right. And and the way that he's going to be bound isn't with what everybody thinks. Right. Everybody thinks this does just wrap this guy up in chains so that uh, he can't hurt us or anybody else. <clears throat> Jesus is just going to do the opposite thing. He's just going to go in there and say. I, I have authority over you and you're out. Go away. I'm going to I'm going to bind you by unbinding this man. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe. It's 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 genuinely ridiculous to watch it play out. Um and like it it's it's one of those like it's it's hard to have sort of a low view of scripture with this with this text, a low view of miracles with this text, because it's it's just utterly outside of the realm of what we sort of think and see today. When it when we talk about Christianity, we always sort of talk about it just sort of as as an inward war against your own worst decisions, trying to behave better. And here you have something that is is so over the top that it can only be confronted with something equally over the top. It has to be the authority of God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's night and day in the tombs, verse 5, right? Cutting himself, crying out. Uh, and when he sees Jesus from afar, he runs and he falls down before him. Which again, it's just, it, it's <clears throat> it's an amazing thing there. Like this this isn't an act of worship, but this is, uh, uh, now the demon is compelled uh, to fall at the face of of the creator of all things, right? I mean, you this, bow, yeah. Right, this is a, these are fallen angels uh, and... Uh, and I, I I love looking at these texts and and realizing that the, the comfort that we find in these texts <clears throat> is that we we don't have a dualistic sort of yeah, idea it's not of a things. Fair fight. No, it's it's not a fair fight, right? The the demons have zero uh, uh, ability to stand toe in toe with Jesus here. Right. So the, the, the demons, the legion for we are many, which is kind of a, it's just, it's a terrifying verse. My name is a legion for we are many. It's intimidating. Um, he, 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 he makes this man stronger than any chain could bind. Um, you, you see that the, the life this man is living. And then the very next verse, he's, he's on his knees begging the Lord right. not to send him out of the country. Right. Right. It's <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy. And legions like, yeah, like you said, I mean, they go into 2000 pigs later on. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, how many was there? I don't know. Or is this just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. What is the demon to pig ratio? Is that what we're asking right now? I, what's the demon to pig ratio, right? Or, yeah, I don't know. Or or can the demon, I don't know. Now it's just the. Uh, can a demon possess two pigs or. or yeah, like... or 2,000 pigs. I don't know. But that's neither here nor there. There's either a, a really powerful, I don't know how you quantify that demon, or there's a lot of them. Doesn't really matter. Uh because they're uh they're at the, the feet of Jesus, right? Um mm -hmm. claiming uh a son of the most high God, right? What do you have to do with me? Right? What do you have to do with me? This is verse seven. Uh, uh Jesus, son of the most high God. Um I adjure you by God, <clears throat> do not torment me. Do not torture me. Isn't this ironic too? Because they've been doing nothing but Right. They've been doing nothing but tormenting and, and torturing this poor man. Um, and, and that's their, that's their prayer <laughs> that it doesn't happen to them. Because this is enough. This isn't just 
demons. It's, Lord, let me not be sinned against the same way I am sinning against other people. Uh, how many times have, have, have you prayed that prayer? How many times have, have, have we, we fallen into those traps? The, the fulfillment of the law is love your neighbor as you yourself would want to be loved. Um, and, well, we don't fulfill the law. Right. Right. So what is, yeah, so what does Jesus do then? He, he gives the demons what they want. Well, well, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, he asks them the name first, and I don't exactly know why, right? Um, and I guess this is this is where we get, uh, I guess this is where we get all those uh, Hollywood. Uh, it gets really culty, yeah. Right, movies, and, and is this what you're supposed to do? And is this what Roman Catholic exorcists do? I, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we have that, right? Uh, for he was saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. It's interesting. He's, it's like Jesus is saying that right away, mm-hmm. right? The guy yeah. comes, the guy comes running. And the way that this is written, the grammar is for he was saying to him, come out of you or come out of the man, you unclean spirit. It's like right away, the guy's running at him. Jesus knows, oh, there's mm-hmm. demons. Come out. No, come out. Mm-hmm. Come out of the guy. You're done. You're done. To, I'm here. Come out of the guy, right? Like when you walk in the room and you know your kids are up to some stuff. Right, and exactly. Like, and Everyone's you're like, stop. Doing, no, we're not doing this today. Yeah. Don't, just stop it. And then they, they are trying to talk to you. Nope. Yeah. Just stop. No. Just stop. <laughs> it's kind of interesting how he's doing that. Yeah. And then he asks him his name. I, I'm not going to pretend to know why. Um, uh, uh, and he begged, this. Uh, he being Legion, um, mm-hmm. begged him being Jesus. Uh, earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there was a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside and they begged him saying, send us into the pigs, let us enter them. And he gives him permission. But before we get to the given to the permission thing, I want to, why, why did they ask to go into the pigs? They're unclean animals. I, I did. This I, I I really think you know real recognize real here um, that there are the things of God and at this point in time the things of 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 evil and at this point in time this was still a no no food this was against kosher meal um, what what they want is then to return to their area they don't want to be gone they definitely don't want to be near the light they want to go back to the darkness it, it's actually the same pattern that you have with the man who possessed by legion wants to make his home amongst death wants to make his home amongst suffering. Um, and, and so here too, then, uh, wanting to be made home uh, among the unclean. I, I, I don't know that this is a stretch. Um, <clears throat> you got a better one though? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe? I'm it. just trying to think unclean because unclean doesn't mean, um, unholy. Uh, so when you go to like Levitical stuff and they're setting up the, uh, the different categories of, of clean, unclean and, and, and all of that, I, there, there are different dimensions, I think. Uh, where unclean, like a, a pig, isn't a, a an evil animal. It's it's just a, a ceremonially unclean. Don't animal. eat it. Yeah, don't. Right now, I, I mean, the demons, I guess, would be both. But and, yeah. and so, so I'm not going to deny what you said there. That 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 could very well be. I I wanted to go to the 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 fact that this is this is the interesting thing. Um, they desire a a temporal body. Yeah. That's interesting. Right. Like they, they would much rather have a temporal body of a pig um, than right. what they are. Right. This is the first jealousy then. Right. Right. Because isn't that basically what Satan is getting uh, Adam and Eve to do or, or attempting uh, to, well, he, he's, he's able to do it, right? The temptation is to be like God, right? To be uh, something other than what you are, Right. And you're the pinnacle of creation, which is silly because you're temporal and you've got these tangible bodies and stuff. So slough all that stuff off and be like God. And, and like you can go, it's it's definitely not canon, um, but like C.S. Lewis wrote the screw tape letters um, where, you know, the, the demons supposedly write letters to themselves complaining about how hard it is to be a demon these days. Um, it's actually, it's a good read. It, is. Um, it, it sort of lays out their plans and, and bear. Um, but one of the things that, that Lewis kind of points out is, is the demon's sort of jealousy over our bodies. Um, they, they have no actual flesh of their, their own. And, and so they, they mock and ridicule it, but it, it, it reproduces. It can make more um, because God's creative word is, is actually effective even, effective even inside of the first article, the creed for all of creation, uh, except them. Um, they, they have a, a jealousy here. And you're right. The idea that they would even settle for a pig's body. 
right? It speaks volumes. That's <clears throat> that's powerful. And then, and then it also speaks to the the, the misunderstood uh, notion that uh, uh, that hell is their fortress, mm. right? They don't yeah. want to go back to the place that is their prison, right? They don't want to go back there. They're just like, no, no, no let us stay here. And get, uh, we want bodies, uh, pigs. So, that's great. I don't can care. I ask a question then, if if this is the case, um, I, I just. Why do they rush into the sea first chance they get? I don't think. Well, I don't know. This now this is speculation. I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure if it's them. Uh, a commentary that I was reading uh, uh, said that this is Jesus, right? Jesus gives them permission. Uh, it, it seems as if he's giving them what he wants uh, or what they want. Um, but I, you know, Jesus being Jesus and all, I think uh, he understands that the pigs are going to go crazy, um, and. It, it, maybe it's maybe it's a kind of a, a twisting of the knife for Jesus. It's like go into these unclean animals. You're not going to stay there for more than a minute and a half because they're going to cast you into the sea. And we, I mean, we've talked about the sea before, right? The treading on the sea and what that uh, uh, that picture was for the people back then, and what we see in the Book of Revelations about the sea being this place of uh, um, uh, unease and death and sin, and yet in the New earth, uh, new heavens and new earth. Uh, John gets this vision of the sea being gone, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it's this place of evil, or it's it's seen to be this place of evil. So Jesus, yeah, okay, go to the pigs. You're going to end up at the place of death, anyways, and that's where I'm sending you. Yeah, you think the farmer was upset? Yeah, because like that's, that's, that's a lot of bacon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Jesus is not kind to to the agrarian folk, though. You, you, it's Palm Sunday too. Like, do you think that dude ever got his donkey back, or like, do you think he's like sitting there on Good Friday, like, man, he never brought it back? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just asking. Like, I, I don't know about I don't know about the 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 cult, the full of the donkey, um, but uh, yeah, I mean the pigs did. I, he didn't get the pigs back. And that's interesting. He I don't starts, have, sorry, go ahead. I don't know either, but but it, it's one of those places where Jesus doesn't deal kindly with us in our idolatry. Like it, it, it's not sort of like, would you please give that to me if you're all done with it now? Um, it, it, the things that we fear, love and trust in the most, sometimes he will actually just rip from our hands and it's, it's awful and it's painful. Oh, wow. See, I never really thought of it that way. But if, if, Certainly, they're in a Gentile area because you got herdsmen with their pigs. Um, and if Jesus is trying to, I mean, he okay, yeah, maybe he is ripping this idolatry I, out and saying, and like, I'm salvation I'm just, comes from the Jews. Yeah, I'm I'm just speculating. Like, this is not the way. And and if this is this is your choice for it, it's I, I'm actually going to spare you from having to make the right one yourself because you cannot, by your own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, your Lord, or come to Him. Um, part of, of new man rising is, is old Adam drowning. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's not a pleasant, it's not a pleasant thing. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think there's some speculation. Uh, I think in, in this text, like we said with the name and it does seem mean that Jesus takes away this guy's livelihood um, or these guys, right. They're the herds men fled yeah. in verse 14. Told, mm-hmm. tells it to the whole country and the people came out to see what had happened. And as they came to see Jesus, they saw the demon possessed man, the one who had had the legion sitting there clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Think about that. Too. We did think, uh, mention that because it doesn't mention it beforehand. It just in retro, um, the guys run around naked too. Right. Uh, but, and just not the tee hee hee naked, but think oh. about the the whole idea of, like the, the the shame and all of this, it, it it's just gone. it's gone, right? This is the the complete and utter abandonment uh, of humanity, right? Depraved place where this guy is, and that that Jesus restores him to. I know we're uh, button up against the time here, so um, but they're they're scared, right? This is interesting. Mm-hmm. I would they, be. They beg Jesus to to leave. It's it's beautiful actually. We have a great reversal happening. Um, the the man is finally going to be welcomed back amongst his friends and family, and it's Jesus who gets cast off into the outer darkness. Right, right. Which is which is a beautiful thing that does happen. Jesus does take that for them, um, but he does right. The guy wants to, and and the the guy wants to go with them, right? Yeah, but no, 
he it's it's not his road to walk right now. He gets he gets to receive. Not only does he get to receive, but this is a beautiful thing too. And 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 this is something that doesn't like you said earlier. I don't think Jesus has done this to to, to any other person yet in the Gospel of Mark. Right? He says, "No, you're going to go and preach this to the Gentiles. I they're gonna they're going to." Uh, uh, try and stone me because they're terrified of me. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take off. I'll be back. Um, maybe I'll feed you at the feeding of the 4,000. That'd be cool if he was there, right? Oh, God. <laughs> hey, Rick! How you doing, <laughs> man? <laughs> wear pants this time, buddy. <laughs> yeah, um, That'd be great. But Rick gets to... Rick, the Gentile, gets to go home and preach it to everybody. And he and notice what he does here, right? Uh, it, it will, and we'll wrap up here. Verse 19. Uh, he did not permit him, Jesus did. He said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Jesus says, just go go tell your friends. Go tell your friends and family. And what does he do in verse 30? He's proclaiming it in all the Decapolis. In 10 cities on the other side, this guy is going and preaching yeah. about Jesus. Oh, everybody. I love it. Cool. All right. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Thank you for that. We're out.